Ah, yes, this game. Mega Man X6 is actually my absolute favorite X game of the entire series, which is very controversial, because everyone says that this is the very, this is the worst X game out of all the X games. I don't really see it. I mean, I can see a couple of reasons why people don't like this game, but I really don't understand why they don't. I mean, okay, well, we'll go over that as I get to it. But anyway, welcome to the sequel that never should have been. Let's see, is that right? I don't even remember my buttons anymore. And I'm still stuck playing with my graphic controller, so we will be using the auto charge still. If you noticed in my option, I turned off the demo voice. The main reason why I turned off the demo voice is because it comes in horribly on the program that I'm actually using, since I don't want to have to loop it through my computer to do some weird thing. But anyway, the story to Mega Man X6 isn't the greatest story, which is, I think is the reason why people hate the story to this game. I mean, play, hate this game in general. But, I mean, if plot holes were uh, such a big issue in games, so a lot of games that should be labeled as the most terrible games on the planet. But I digress, and yeah, I've been spending a lot too much, too much time watching that. Mega Man X6 made a few improvements over X5. One of my favorite improvements, which we're not going to see here, we're going to see in later playthroughs, because yes, this is also going to be a complete playthrough, is the fact that you can skip cutscenes, which I think X5 could have really, really, really used. But then again, it's not nearly as bad as Remember Me, which is also made by Capcom. Oddly enough, it was made by Capcom seven years after this game. This game, they learned, hey, we should probably skip cutscenes. I would have said that was remember me. It would have made platinum in that game so much easier. Gate in my opinion, is very forgettable. I mean, half the time you don't even remember that he's here. Come on, let's load so I can go ahead and start talking. Alright, welcome to the intro stage. There's a lot of good things, as I said, this game does move a lot over the original, well, the other X games. One of the big improvements to this game is the fact that, well, Alia would interrupt you in X5, which was okay, except for a few times where she would interrupt you and get you killed in the volcano stage. Here, in this game, you don't necessarily have to answer Alia. Alia calls, you don't have to pick up. It's all optional. The way that you pick up on Alia, except for a few required conversations, is by pressing the select button. Now it's the same as she used to, except for the fact that he does not have the nerve fourth on her. In this case, he has the Falcon armor. The Falcon armor, yeah, it we see a big power decrease. Number one, the charge buster shot no longer goes through walls, which is a huge shot. Number two, while this armor can now dash, which is pretty good, it really needed it, it lost the flight of aim, which is huge. Oh my gosh, that's the invincibility period of the flight broke X5. It did add a few other things. I mean, 
X now has zero saber from X5. It's not that powerful here, but it's powerful when you use it in different situations. Your dash does hurt enemies, but you will get hit, you will get hurt if you don't kill any of these enemies in like a single hit. So if a normal weak buster shot does not kill an enemy, don't bother trying to dash into them because you're not going to hurt them. Well, you're going to hurt them, but they're going to hurt you. But anyway, as I was mentioning before, I don't hate X6. I actually do like X6. It is my favorite X game. And a lot of people ask why, and I think the reason why a lot of people hate this game is for one or two reasons. Number one, there's this um, line when you get a sub Wow, that was embarrassing. <laughs> there's this line when you get a certain character back in this game that a lot of people don't like. And I'll actually cover in this particular video. I'm going to try to consolidate my let's play for this game to be a lot shorter than the well, it's not going to be shorter, it's probably going to be longer, but it's not going to be so many parts, I'm going to try to do two stages per video instead of one stage. There's two different reasons, well, that's the same before I got confused sidetracked by dying, but there's probably two different reasons, maybe three reasons, why people do not like this game, or why people hate this game so much, which I really don't understand. One of them could be how difficult this game is, because there's a lot more instant death and a lot more difficulty to this game than there are to the other games. My favorite stage is the volcano stage, I think. Yes, it's the volcano stage. And the volcano stage is fairly hard because you have to face as many bosses and it's not just one, you face three of them. And unless you're really skilled at dodging or you've gotten used to playing this game, which apparently I haven't, you will die. It's just going to happen. And so maybe people might hate it because of that. And I can somewhat understand being mad at a game for its difficulty, but saying it's a poor game means that sounds lazy, in my opinion. This boss is fairly easy. You can hit him, well, the big cannabinoid, you can actually hit it and deal damage, but it's not really all that useful. It's just easier to just switch sides and hit the small little giving you power to save it. It's a very easy boss. This boss is followed up by another boss, High Max. High Max is a special boss. And I really like the way they did High Max in this game. Oh yeah, there's a zero. But anyway, I really like the way they did... Wow, I lost my track. I really like how they did High Max in this game. Mainly because, as you're about to see, when you first fight High Max, you can't hurt him. Which I think is cool. Well, no, actually that's rather generic, having a boss that you fight that you can't really damage. But, what I think is interesting is, every single other time that you fight High Max, he's pretty much invincible to most of your attacks. Which I think is actually pretty cool. I mean, you have this one enemy that you run into and you can't hurt him, really. And when you come back to him, you still can't really hurt him. You have to devise a strategy to it, which I think is really cool. But it does make the game a little harder. Or a little bit harder. You can't really deal damage to him, so just try to stay out of his way. He has two attacks. He either shoot energy orb at you, or he'll dash at you, or he'll fire those I guess it's three. But it's really short.
really think that was a nice, well I won't say, yeah that was a really nice song. Um, I cannot think today. I have no idea why. I'm actually going to save because there's a good chance that I'm going to have to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth to get good recordings on this one. But effectively, what's going on is, well, I'll explain the story as it slowly trickles in, even though I already know this entire story. X was called in to fight that Mechanoloid because it had gone berserk. When he gets there and he defeats Mechanoloid, a nightmare shadowy version of Zero shows up and destroys it. Right after that nightmare shadowy version of Zero disappears, or Zero leaves the area, then High Max comes in, and High Max is actually looking for Zero. So apparently, Z Nightmare Zero is actually doing terrible things to these Reploids. So they're trying to get up a gigantic mob, and they're looking into Zero and trying to figure out what's going on. But they're sitting opposite of the Maverick Hunters. Ugh, so much dialogue. I mean, I could easily skip this. I could just hit the start button and skip this entire dialogue, but this is the first video. It's the first time I'm going through this, so I can't skip it. On the second and third playthroughs, then I can. But unfortunately, I can't do it on this one. So effectively, the mob is now hunting Zero. But, as we'll find out later, there's something special about each of these investigators. And they're trying to delete Zero's ghost, which of course, X is going to clue in on because Zero is his best friend. Zero died to save X in the previous game, no matter which ending you got. Except for the final ending, the final worst ending, which will be the last video I uploaded before this one. Because I have not recorded the extra video yet. But Zero died to save X. Except for that last video, which he still did die to save X, but this does not happen in that continuity. Alright, so we're getting into the next part. And here's another thing that I love that X6 did. In X5 and X4, the two, oh, the other two X games that are on PlayStation, they did something that uh, annoyed me greatly. They would introduce each individual boss and tell you what they were, what they did, and they didn't really give you information, so it was really flavor text. And it was flavor text for no point. You just had to sit there and you spam the X button because you've read this a hundred million times so you don't want to read it again. Here, they don't even bother to do that when they stop talking. They don't even do that. As you just saw, all eight bosses popped up. No text. Which is awesome. Now this game does offer a few other things. Um, there's parts that you can collect that you 
get from Rumble Boys as you save them. Which it it improves on X5 part si part system by the fact that every well X and well I'm no, well, X at this point in time can actually equip five parts. No matter what, it's actually going to affect his armor, I think. But we'll find that out later. So, anything that you have equipped is going to affect X. Even the ultimate armor, well, the ultimate, this is in quotations, which in this particular case is the blade armor, not the blade armor. The dark armor can be equipped. And as we saw in the previous X5 game, Gaia armor cannot have anything equipped to it, which is kind of its downfall. Um, but we'll get more of the parts as I collect parts. Also, you can collect, well, not collect, but you can save, I'm trying to remember, 16 times 8. 16 times 8, whatever that number is, is late at night, so I can't even remember. Reploids in each individual stages, and they'll give you different individual power ups. Either power up your life, power up your weapon or give you parts. There's a lot that you can do with it. But it makes the game a little harder because if you try to rescue all of the Reploids, it can get pretty difficult. Actually, to this point, I've never actually rescued every single Reploid. I've always missed a few in Blaze Hit Heat Blaze Heat Nix's area. Which is actually one of, if not my favorite X stage. But anyway. For the purpose of this playthrough, I'm going to start off here, and I'm starting off with X. The reason why is because we're not actually going after Shelby, we're going after somebody else. We'll be coming back to Shield Sheldon later, but I need something from his area. I choose his level because it's easiest to get to the everything. Well, we'll read those hints in his actual playthrough when I play through his level. Now, the guy with all the tentacles that you saw, that's a nightmare. Nightmares do not necessarily have to be used to increase your hunting. But they also corrupt reploids, so you need to beat them to the reploids. Now you can stand in the beam of the lasers when they're not firing, but any ricochet, basically where you see where it's actually hitting something, you cannot stand in that area. You will take damage. You'll also take damage if the laser's firing, if the laser's traveling towards you. You can avoid it if you're just staying in the beam path. Now, the right, correct pathway, Going up. We're actually going down. Now, in this particular game, there's actually three different enemies as well. As I finish this next boss, I will explain what the enemies are. Wow, that was cool.
Now some of these walls you can't actually wall kick off of. Gotcha. Okay. Wow. Okay, that was bad. <laughs> but I saved all the rest of it, so I'm okay. Now those portals lead to different areas. It leads to secret areas in each of the individual air individual stages. Want to grab that? That's where your first heart tank is. You don't want to get it with the dark armor, but I feel extremely scattered because I'm not staying on the same topic at the same time. Those increase your life, obviously. If you're but if you're new to the Mega Man X universe, you can actually use those to increase your life. Anyway, these portals lead to different special areas. If you talk to Alia, well, if you attempt to talk to Alia, you'll find out that you can't talk to Alia. So X pretty much just talks to himself. There's three different kinds of bosses that you will see here. There's two different boss types of bosses that you're going to see in this area. You will see one boss, and we'll come, come, come across in a second. Then there's two other bosses. Like X5, you can actually reach the final area, the final boss area, without beating all eight bosses. However, it's a lot harder in this game. Oh, well. I got him still. It's a lot harder to get to. Final area, though, than it is other actually. Maybe because there's a boss you have to defeat that's fairly hard. This is the. If you notice, I came into the stage without the Falcon Army, even though I easily could have worn the Falcon Army. This is an idiom secret to me. <laughs> Whenever I face this boss, I have to do it naked. So we just run into the shadowy nightmare version of Zero. And X picks up, picked up on the fact that this is not the real Zero and he wants to destroy him. Because he's smearing his friend's memory and name. This boss fight is plays out a lot like the boss fight on X5. <laughs> oh, this is going to be terrible. This boss is actually very easy, but I'm refusing to do it the easy way, right? which I probably shouldn't, because I'm just making myself feel worse, especially since it's already looking pretty terrible. His weakness is actually the zero saber, the saber that you're holding onto right now. If you don't have a special weapon, you just hit the special weapon button and you slash it. Only problem is, he will commonly come out and do an attack that hurts a lot. However, thankfully, it's been done for the last game. Okay. <sighs> anyway, I said it was done from the last game because it's not nightmares. 
Zero. But if Maverick Zero actually starts using that attack, it's a one-hit kill, and you can no longer damage Zero anymore. <laughs> and I'm just embarrassing myself. Okay, I saw that coming and dodge. Still did nothing. I really wish that Zero X had a ground splash. And that's one of the things I like about this game. It gave X more close range compatibility, more close range combat ability. That makes more sense. But it's not necessarily easy for X either. And apparently, I should be going to armor me because. I'm taking a lot of damage from attacks. Oh, this is awful. This is awful. I'm probably... I can't even cut a half of this because I haven't talked over it. What's well, worse on my test plays, I didn't have nearly this much trouble. Now, as you saw there, my jumping slash did... ...cause him to recoil. Yeah, it's taking a long time. Your jumping slash doesn't cause you to re it doesn't cause him to recoil. It's not his weakness. It's only when you're standing in a regular <laughs> slash that you actually cause him to recoil. Oh, I really need him to do something. It will get better, I promise. I'm just terribly out of practice. <laughs> and I'm doing this the hard way. Wow, being terribly out of practice. <laughs> If I had to continue here, I'm gonna be so mad at myself.
told you I could do it. Let's try to do this without armor and with that little bit of health. You only really get four hits. Well, it takes a lot more hits to take down. But anyway, we're coming up on the cutscene that probably causes so much hate for this game. You get Zero back. Which, if you're a Zero fan, I understand. Well, if you're a Zero fan, you get Zero back and you can finally play with Zero. Which is like, okay, cool. You get to play with your favorite character. I'm not a Zero fan, so I really don't care. Well, I decently care. But... Zero says something in this that really makes people upset with this game. X says he searched all over for Zero's parts, and he looks for a signal, but he found nothing. And then Zero's like, well, that's kind of sad. I hid myself while I tried to repair myself. And I think this is the reason why this game receives so much hate. This one statement right here. Because it's a gigantic plot hole. It's like, okay, you just spit in the face of the X5 series. So, that's not that big a deal. Really, it's not. And for some strange reason, I completely lost control. Give me one second. Okay, I'm back. And that statement is probably the reason why people hate it. But number one, plot holes in games. Really, this is what you're going to show the most anger at. <sighs> There's so much worse that can actually that can actually happen. Just get over it. If it helps, the way that I think of this is, and I don't really care what anyone really, really says, Zero didn't repair himself. Dr. Light did. I know you're saying, well, why didn't Zero just say that? Well, there's a couple different reasons. Number one, Zero does not like depending on people, as we've seen through the majority. Well, he does like depending on people, but... Whenever someone thinks there's something wrong with him, Zero gets incredibly defensive, which means he's probably fairly prideful. So, he wouldn't want X to know that some unknown to him, but it actually turns out being X's creator, Doctor repaired him. Okay, that's understandable. Number two, I mean, it's fairly, it's fairly possible that Doctor Light could have actually repaired him. Because if we think about it, there's a lot of things that Dr. Light was fairly cryptic about in X5. Number one, Dr. Light didn't tell Zero that he actually knew his creator was Dr. Wily, even though it would have been very easy.